Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about pyrimidine synthesis. And we're going to see that it's very different and contrasts sharply with purine synthesis. All right. When we talked about purine synthesis, I mentioned one really important thing. The ring, or the double ring, I should say, for purines is synthesized on the ribose ring, meaning we actually synthesize the, the purine nucleus while it's being attached to the ribose. It's actually a part of the ribose as we're making it. So once we have the ring and we cyclize it, as in the case we have orotate, then we attach it to the ribose. Okay, so it's a different strategy for making the pyrimidines. Okay, and in this one we're particularly going to look at UTP and CTP biosynthesis. All right, and thymine is made in a very different way. It's made from 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 U and C but it's gonna require a lot of different other reactions, so we're gonna cover that later. So we are gonna cover in this playlist thymine synthesis, but it's gonna be very different, okay? Now, again, not to get into all the weeds of this pathway, but this is the pathway, we start with aspartate, an amino acid. So it turns out pyrimidines are made from aspartate. Now notice what we're gonna do. We're gonna react with this enzyme called aspartate transcarbamylase. This enzyme, aspartate transcarbamylase, also called sometimes abbreviated ATCase, is one of the most important and highly studied allosteric enzymes. Okay, um, This was actually one of the first characterized allosteric enzymes, so that's why it's been very well studied. And we're going to have an entire video on its regulation because it turns out that it's a sort of a classic one to understand allosteric, okay? But it turns out that, we'll talk, which we'll talk about its regulation in a few minutes, but it is the regulated step in this pathway. The product of aspartate transcarbamylase is this molecule called, called N-carbamyl aspartate. And through the enzyme of dihydroorotase, we are going to cyclize it into dihydroorotate. Now again, the reactions are really not that important, which we're going to actually dehydrogenate it to make orotate, but notice that orotate, right here where my mouse is, we have a fully cyclized ring. Then, through the action of a phosphoribosyl transferase, which is going to use PRPP as the ribose donor, or the ribose 5-phosphate donor, then, now that we have this ring already made, now we're going to attach it to the ribose. So hopefully you see there how that works, and that's going to give us erotidylate. Now, I'm going to mention this enzyme right here, erotidylate decarboxylase, because it's a really interesting enzyme. And I'm actually going to have a mechanism of this enzyme in the next video, because I think it's very impressive and it's kind of cool. So erotidylate is going to be decarboxylated right here at this carboxyl group by erotidylate decarboxylase to make uridylate. And now we have UMP, by the way. Okay, But erotidylate decarboxylase is really, really impressive, and here's why. It has the greatest rate enhancement of any enzyme known to man. All right, so the actual decarboxylation of erotidylate to uridylate, or UMP, without an enzyme, uncatalyzed, should take about 37 million years. This enzyme does it in a matter of milliseconds, which is very impressive. And the reason I love this mechanism so much is the enzyme actually never even touches the erotidylate. Most, most enzymes, their mechanisms involve like a nucleophilic attack or, you know, something like that. You know, even mostly nucleophilic attack, Lewis acid-based chemistry, right? Erotidylate decarboxylase doesn't even touch erotidylate. This carboxyl group has a negative charge, and it turns out all the enzyme does is it places strategically an aspartate with also a negative charge in really close proximity to that carboxyl group, and it creates so much repulsion that the carboxyl group just falls off and that's the decarboxylation. I just find that really impressive. It doesn't even touch erotidylate. It just puts the aspartate really close to it and it causes the carboxyl group to be removed. That's impressive to me considering the fact that its rate enhancement is the maximum that we've observed, which is pretty impressive. All right. And by the way, you might also see this enzyme erotidylate decarboxylase listed as OMP decarboxylase. But in any case, that's going to give us UMP or uridylate. Now, UMP can be phosphorylated twice by two kinases to make UTP. UTP can then react with cytodylate synthetase, and that gives us CTP. All right, so UTP is converted directly by one enzyme to CTP. And that's the synthesis of two of our pyrimidines. Remember, we have thymine also, but we're going to cover that in a different video. So understand the order of synthesis is always U and then C and then T. All right? 
Now, one other important thing that's kind of interesting about this is the allosteric regulation. It turns out that ATCase, or aspartate transcarbamylase, the first enzyme up here, is allosterically inhibited by the end product of this pathway, which is CTP. So it turns out if CTP is high enough in the cell, it will come back and inhibit ATCase, which makes sense, right? Because if you already have enough CTP, you don't need to be making more CTP. So you have enough of this, it will inhibit aspartate transcarbamylase. And we are going to have a, a video about the allosteric of aspartate transcarbamylase in another video because it's very well studied and very impressive. All right, so that is pyrimidine synthesis, at least the U and C part. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.